Welcome back to the Tim and Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. How's it going, Steve? Doing well, Timothy. How are you? Meh. I'm all right. We've uh, uh, been here for like two hours doing show prep, and then we talked to the superintendent, and so I still don't, I still feel like unorganized today about our show, but yeah, we'll wing it. I have all kinds of good things to talk about. Um, events and stuff like that, which is nice to see that we're starting to get into that time of year, I think, where the, because for a long time it's like, so much of our show would be like, hey, there's this event and there's that event, but for the last, you know, most of the winter, there's not a lot happening, so it's like, oh, okay, and today I've got like a, a big old list, which is pretty sweet, so there's a lot of things happening around here that people can attend and check out, which is nice, so... um one thing I wanted to, again, mention was thank you to our new sponsor, Sunshine Realty. Teresa Sherman reached out and said, hey, I'd like to sponsor your show for a little bit. I was like, all right, that's awesome. Appreciate that. So we'll make sure we do our part. And So if you're looking for a house or you're selling your house or you want to sell your house, reach out. She can hook you right up. And uh, it's still a hot housing market. I know things have, like, come down some, but uh, still, I mean, we have a, definitely have a housing yeah, I guess crisis. They shortage, crisis. shortage for sure. Um, we'll see how that all goes in the next year or two. But it's interesting. I wonder. So, if the housing shortage is caused by increase or influx of people wanting to live here because of the freedoms that we had, like you would think that they would vote for more freedoms. You yeah, know, it's kind of like mean, people who leave California and go to Texas and vote the same way and to make. Like, yeah. Well, that's happened for years. People complain about, like, Massachusetts, mass, mass, right? mass. And so you want to, you know, come up here and, you know, mass up New Hampshire. Like, we didn't like it down there, but maybe we could do a little different here. And it's like, you it's realize the exact same thing. that's like saying, like, you know, we should become a full socialist country. And, well, it's never worked in the past. Why would it work now? But we'll do it differently. Like, are you stupid? They'll kill more people. Right. Like, <laughs> no, it didn't work. So keep your mass stuff in mass. And then... Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. We got to do something because we don't fund education like we're supposed to constitutionally. Although they say we do, you know, apparently four thousand dollars is enough to educate your kids. But I mean, I guess if we send them to a school that didn't have any teachers or one teacher for the whole school or something, but like it's just crazy. Um, yeah, it's nuts. But I mean, so you got to do something. You got to change something. You can't just keep, you know, from. It's- I don't like the idea of any new taxes. None. Trust me. I 100%. However, and like people talk about income tax. And I, so I'm totally against income tax because that's just more people that are working losing their money. And if you're going to do a tax, do sales tax because then drug dealers pay sales tax. Welfare people pay. Everybody pays sales tax. Everybody. So that's more. That's a fair system where everybody pays, not, oh, you work, we're going to tax you some more. Oh, you don't work? Oh, you're good. Don't worry. We're not going to tax you. It's okay. Like, no, that's not okay. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no, we're not going to do that. So we're just going to what? continue to do what we're doing, which is nothing, but it seems to be. You know, you get all this money, too. Like, the state gets huge amounts of money from the federal government, like $100 million for housing. Now, I don't think that's bad, but... Why is the federal government involved with housing? I mean, I guess you could stretch it and be like, well, it's, we're talking cross border economics and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. But instead of giving the town money for every housing thing they bring in, like, I don't see the logic. Like, where's that? Like, I don't know. Like, wouldn't there be incentives to build or they're. Yeah, like, something. we'll pay for half of your sewer system or two thirds of it because really. You need to expand it, but you don't have the population base yet to right. afford an expandable one. But if we want you to add housing, then we'll help you reduce the burden to your already current tax base. Yeah, something. Something. Yeah, like, you, I mean, you know, you think yeah. there should be some logic and reason involved with some common sense and some well, no, cause you go sense down, of community across. No, you go to Concord, and there are exceptions, but a small amount of exceptions. Seems like many people when you go down there, whether it's the house or whatever, it's like it's like going into a nursing home. Like these people are 
like 70, 80 years old, and the last time they knew about current events was probably 50 years ago. Well, no, you see that was even on the national level. Yeah. I'm trying to talk to the Twitter files, and then you want to say, how old are your assistants? Because they should make sure that you're not a moron in your terms. Uh, Because there were some, and one of the ladies was from Texas. I was embarrassed for her, for her district. Garcia, I think that was her name, like totally. The young lady? No, the the old. Oh. And I old being relative, but she's older in the sense of what you're talking about. Yeah. She had no clue about Substack, like all these different little things that maybe she did and she was playing dumb, right. but no, it didn't not. work in her favor if she was doing it on purpose. No. Or if she did it on purpose. You see all the time, like when we went to our thing, and I'm like, my goodness, like. Well, ours was, I think it's a seasoned committee, so you would probably end up with those who have the longest tenure. Yeah. Usually on committees like that, because you you earned it because you put your time in and you're you're closer to the. But it's also very tough in New Hampshire too because mechanisms of power. You don't get paid. Right, it's per diem, which is how it used to be. Right. Which, nationally, because now they not wanted a, everybody to be on the same. Right. So I'm not necessarily against that, but however, majority of the people that would be good in those positions couldn't do them because you have to have money or be retired like you have to have an income coming in and so that's why you're getting what you see because well i can't afford to quit my job and go there no but like if you if you went and met like what are the because they have they go into sessions right so even if it were because there's got to be just like with the national guard but they don't get paid for the reserves like you don't lose your job so I'm sure that has worked in there. Right, but you wouldn't get paid from your job while you're Right, no, no. So, you and it's... But that would make you be quicker, right? So the the idea would be that you're down there, you're working hard, and you're getting back so you can make your money, support your family. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you, but uh, I don't know. I saw a clip where Elon Musk was saying that elected officials should be within, like, 10, 20 years of the average age of citizen in the U.S. Because they had this, he was having this exact same conversation about, you know, you got got an aging population of representatives and senators that are kind of out of touch. Right. All you got to do is listen to Pelosi. Right. I mean, the flip side is then you get some younger ones in there, like, they're also seem out of touch with some of the realities, but... The majority of them are the ones that have been there, and, and they've been there forever. So they're totally in the system, part of the problem. Uh, you know, you need a revolving door of people to some degree, so that way it's fresh ideas. And Yeah, you don't want to be on the school board for 20 years. No, not really. You want to go on and do something different. Like Go on. I mean, I can see you doing a couple terms. Like, I, I, sure, but, yeah, exactly. Like, you get to a point where you're not there, okay, Done this for 20 years. Well, school board stuff, too, because so many people don't run. Like, literally, like, like Bert got his position because no one even ran. Like, um, which is sad because the importance of that is huge. I know. It's it's sad because we need involvement across all aspects of society. Like, everybody, we got complacent. We handed over our trust to people who hadn't really earned it. Maybe their predecessors had earned it, but then over time you get more and more compromised people. And by compromise, I mean, you know, there's some compromised people, I would say. And And it's tough, too, because... State houses and Congress. Like, I can understand to some degree how people get in there and then kind of get off track because it's like, man, if I work with this person... Uh, and if I give up something, right, and I work with them, we get more, right? So it's like, okay, I give up something that, you know, I'm like, ah, you know, I am standing strong on this, but then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, but this person. Right Liberals here don't is, really compromise much. No, and that's why they always beat That's them. why conservatives don't conserve anything because they have that same attitude that you're saying is, well, if I give this up, maybe we can work together. Like, right. And that's not to say, like, in every instance, but I'm just saying on the grander scale of 
politics. I would say since I was a child, the country has, at least in the media and the movies and everything else, swung way far to the left, where I think most people are still reasonableist in the middle. But, like, now you got all this stuff way out there that... And the only thing you ever hear is the extreme stuff, because that's what the media... Yeah, that's what, pushes. That's what sells and yeah. gets your attention. Right. On both sides. It's all the extreme stuff. So. The middle of the road where people are like, well, you know, I really kind of disagree with that, but I can see this and blah, 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 you know. <laughs> I also think most people don't watch news anymore either, you know. Oh, I don't think so. I think you have an elderly population that probably watches it that are, you know, brainwashed by it, honestly. They see it day in and day out and like, you know, that's not true, right? And I can show you this. and But if you hear it over and over and over, like it's like subliminal messaging. You repeat a lie enough, people start believing it. Yeah. It's it's kind of crazy, but um, so yeah, I've kind of I'm like kind of at that point where I'm like, hmm, if I know I could get things I think that we need or I think that would help this town, but I'm like, but that means giving up something else, and I'm like, eh, I don't I don't know I don't think I don't know it's a tough one, but that's what's happened in Washington. That's what happens in Concord. That's what happens in every state. Well. I'm really standing firm on this, but this will get us this. So then you're weighing it on a scale, what's better. But that's not good either because now you're giving up something that, you know. Yeah, well, you would think in a democracy that uh, people call our constitutional republic, that if of your constituents, even if you have 3 million and 300 of them write you and say, this is what I want. And 200 write you and say, this is what I want. And normally you're aligned with the 200. You should go with the 300. Right. I mean, you should, right? Like if it were a democracy. Right. But it's not. Like everybody writes the two-party system. Yeah, that's the biggest issue. I think Washington said that, didn't he? He said a lot of things. Yeah. Allegedly. At this point in time, I don't even know anymore. Like, you know, I'd rather have a book that at least I know when it was published and everything else because now you go find quotes on here and it's. Yeah. It goes back to the whole the second piece. It's, it's, like, like, it's like, this is, this fits perfectly for 1778. I don't know, you know, which, which I remember when I studied it in the books, there were things like that, like, wow, not much has changed. So not much has changed because, you know, men were all. You know, sinners, corruptible, whatever, whatever word you want to use. Like we all have our weaknesses, and if someone exploits it, then they have control and power over you. Yeah, kind of like you want to watch this movie, but you have to accept these terms of service before you can watch it. Even though they want you to pay twenty four ninety nine, you don't really own the movie anymore. Now they can update it and change the words, change cut scenes out to their liking. So, you know, back 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer, when the video games were trying, the community was trying to reject, I don't know, was it called DRM, Digital Rights Management. Basically, you know, I own this disc because they didn't want you trading in. So they started right. roping it in, and now it's all digital. Yeah. You it's like, I don't really own anything. No. There's nothing tangible current. in front of you. Yeah. Like music, you don't own anymore? No. You can't even upload your own CDs from 20 years ago anymore. I think they stopped that. You probably can, but, like, I don't think it's compatible with iTunes anymore if I... It's, like, more expensive. Everything's more expensive, yet you're getting less out of everything. Because there's nothing tangible anymore. It's like, oh, there's my movie collection. There's my CD collection. Like, no, it's like, oh, here on my phone, it's provided it never crashes. There's not an issue. Like, see, I bought that movie for $25. Oh, where is it? I don't know. It's on my phone. It's on the, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And, and it's weird. And just. Yeah. It's yeah. basically you'll own nothing and like it. Like, there's parts of it. Like, Apple trying to get their phone as a service and not as a phone. Just like we can't remove our batteries anymore from our phones. Right. You can't remove them or replace them because then you buy a new phone. Like, like, some of them you can't even put a memory card in anymore. That, that was, like, standard. And then you buy your phone. You're like, well, where do I put my memory card? Oh, we don't do that anymore. You technically don't even own the phone anymore. They're like seventeen hundred dollars, and you pay a rental fee, like thing. Like it's just somebody's just sitting there laughing every time yes. one of us purchases a phone. There's somebody rolling over in their grave, having a good time. Like these jackasses. Yeah, 
and you, all this money for nothing. And oh, you want this to work? You have to accept our terms and conditions. Wait a minute, I just bought it. You still have to accept the terms and conditions. Well, what if I don't? Well, then you have a phone that you can't use, and <laughs> sorry. Like, right. wait, what? It's crazy. I don't know. All that to say, Sunshine Realty. Yeah. <laughs> Solving your real estate needs in the Newport area. Well said. I was just bringing it back because you said we had a lot of events to talk about. We just went down a rabbit hole for 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So school board meeting next it, it Thursday, moved. Yeah. April 6, 5 o'clock in Thompson Room. Uh, Scheduling conflicts. Apologize in that capacity as a school board member for my own personal because I will not be here. So I'm part of the problem. Yes. Steve can't be here, so we had to move the meeting. Um, going on. Uh, okay. So it's next Thursday. It's next Thursday. The 6th. And the reason we had to move it is because I was informed that the Reba tickets that my wife bought for her mom and her and me and somebody else, uh, whoever, her sister, and was the 13th, which I was supposed to remember this since December, and I apparently didn't. So... I was like, oh, that's a serious issue because to have a quorum, I have to be at this meeting because Steve's going to be away. And, uh, but also, I could be in a lot of trouble at home, which I spend a lot of time doing this stuff already and like a lot of other stuff. So I'm like, hmm. So thank you for that, guys, for being able to accommodate me as well and just moving the meeting forward a week. And, uh, and I think we're going to extend out the requirement to apply for the board position because we don't want to give people less time to prepare because originally yes. they thought they had until yeah, the right. 13th. Which would be... And so a week extra to prepare if you're not used to speaking or whatever. Like yeah. That that makes a difference. So then we'll do a second one in April. Is that the plan? I got to figure okay. that out. We're not sure. That's not, uh, that's not really important, but just this is important. And, and the reason I want to mention it and that th this is important is we really need community members to show up at this meeting because we're going to discuss behavior in our schools. Yeah, I'm supposed to. Uh, you're like, I'm not quite sure. No, no, no. Well, I, I just haven't looked at the uh, I, Well, either way. I need to look at the agenda. And either way, we're talking about it in some capacity. So um, it's just, I mean, we hear things as board members, and then obviously I have kids in school, so I hear things. And um, – our schools is completely out of control. I mean, we've known this for a while now, but now's the time. And there are to students that are out of control. Students, their, yes. Their behaviors are yeah. not conforming. The more stuff I hear, like I literally, and I'm not exaggerating this, like I hear things from. It kind of sounds bad, conforming. But. Well, I hear things, and I, I said some. I actually said to a parent the other day, I was like, it's starting to seem like there's more like consistency and like more like the behavior is better like in a prison than our fucking school and not like state prison where those bad bad people but like you know a correction facility like it seems like less bad stuff is in the sense of like they just do what they're told because they know they have to kind of thing where our school is just like it's like a zoo it's, it's not a zoo like it's just so i am very much all about free thinking and not being uh scared of authority right like to not let authority be abused this is not the same in the sense of like if you agree to the social contract to send your child to school then there's a certain decorum and behavior that they should have and you should help the rest of the community ensure that your child conforms and to the behavior standards now i get it if you're being told something that's wrong illegal immoral then students need to stand up for themselves and sure like that's not what i'm saying is just you know but does that sit down and shut up but too yeah there should be some respect a lot of our teachers are uh, this is like a second career for them so not all of them you know went to school to be teachers they have uh, you know life experience that and now they're doing this to give back and then you're going to find yourself to where because there is a teacher shortage, you're going to find people are less willing to give back if they're getting abused every day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the 
and their t- hands are tied behind their back, not necessarily by us or anything other than the laws and the regulations that are on the books. And we haven't had enough time, like, filling positions as it is. And last week, I think it was, like, the one of the middle school science teachers almost quit because it just couldn't handle the chaos anymore, if you want to call it that. Um, and it's like... And that's just public continue. knowledge because that was the kids all know that. That's not yeah. something that you yeah. heard as good. I no, I watch what I say. That no, no, no. But I'm making book. sure though for anybody watching because yeah. this is news to me. And I'm yeah, no. This I'm is, trying to remain calm because I. But I was like, I do not have an email on that. But yeah, so yeah, like us parents. I kind of t- I remember you telling me that yeah, us parents get emails and she emailed and then you know my student confirms it too and. So it's just like, enough. Like, this is school. You're here to learn. You have to be here. The state says you have to be here. Uh, just work with everyone and just do what you got to do. Learn. Be a good student. Be good to your fellow classmates. And then go home. Like, it's real. Like, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty easy thing to do. And, this, like, especially, you know, looking back as an adult. But then again, you know, I also understand that. Younger kids need play time, and they need to burn off those calories. That's why yeah. recess is there is because they need to be active, and they need to explore and use their imagination and socialize. But, you know, by the time you're in middle school, you should have a pretty good understanding of how society functions, which is, you know, you're here to learn some things. Like, you may not understand it now, but you might need to be able to do this type of math problem no matter what you do, whether you're, uh, you know, stay-at-home mom, dad, or, uh, you know, anything. Like, you yeah. still got to be able to do, like, some basic things. You got to have an understanding of. Right, like, we don't like our test scores because, you know, they're not great. We don't like, you know, we're not teaching some of the stuff that I think we should be teaching. And I know you would agree with a lot of these life skill things that don't seem to be taught in school anymore, which they should be. But to ever even get to that point where we can improve our test scores or we can teach these things that we truly believe are way more important than, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we have to have a classroom that can function and, and these kids can learn and an environment they can learn. In. And like, and especially when you get down to even the, like the younger levels of elementary school, if they're seeing a kid, you know, destroy a class or having these violent outbursts or whatever, like, this classroom, all these kids that aren't used to trauma are now being traumatized. It's like, do you parents realize that some of this is happening in your school? Like, your kids are being traumatized in school, and it has nothing to do with you, and it has nothing to do with them. It's just they're in that classroom with, you know, one student, two students, whatever. And, like, you know, and little things always happen back when we were in school, right? Yeah, it was always. Um... It was always, but we also had... I think had more pairs for the kids that did have some of the issues. We had a separate room a lot of times for like, you know, the student would go do his whatever with, you know, such and such, you know, like things were set up different, but it's not okay. Like, I'm just like, done with it. like, it's not okay. And, and I never even thought of those things until like recently where someone's like, you realize that these few students are like actually causing legit trauma. Oh, no, that's, and that's eye opening because that's not, I never thought of it. Though. I never thought of, like I did, but not in that, not in that, that term. Like it, yeah. she painted a very good picture for us. Yeah. And, and you know, to think about very vivid, we have some students that have horrible, horrible lives, which me as a person, it pisses me off. Like it makes me want to go find their parents. And, uh, because it's like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like it's a decision to have a child. No one puts a gun here and says, oh, you're going to have a child. Like, you have options. And, like, now you have a child. Now it's time to be responsible and parent. Not, oh, well, you know, I didn't really want you. And, like, it's I, so you have a select amount of people like that, right? And they're, all these kids are experiencing trauma at home. Horrible things. Like, and we only know yeah. the tip of the iceberg or barely even the tip of the iceberg what these teachers see every day it's insane it it, seriously when you go there and talk and then you leave there and you feel like horrible inside because you're like oh my god i'm telling you i my whole 
attitude changed once I like substitute is one thing, but then I did when I did long term substitute and then you get to know everybody and six months in that environment, our teachers put up with a lot of stuff. And, way, and, and, way and, beyond teaching. And it's not even if they put up with it. So they put up with stuff, but then they also handle things. They solve problems that most of us would be like, wait, why is a teacher? So, you know, when I see like these national debates, like parental rights, which number one, my take on that is I don't need a law to tell me what my rights are with my child. But that's the state that we're in. Um, but you also have some parents that they just aren't not they're not involved. They're not teaching them right and wrong, or they think it's funny whenever you're disrespectful to a teacher because they didn't like their teacher for whatever reason. And, like, that's not, you know, I, like, there's stuff there that needs to get worked out, but not on, not at the detriment of the kids who just want to sit in there, learn math, reading, writing, and, you know, go home and, and ride their bus, have recess, have fun. Like, you're supposed to be having fun while learning. Like, when my son comes home from school and he even notices it and, like, he gets, like, he's not the perfect student, perfect whatever. Like, he does dumb things, too. He's a typical teenager, right? But when he comes home and says, you know, holy crap, like, it's just, it's insane. Like, the whole thing, it's just the whole thing. And it's like, if he's noticing it, it must be really bad, you know, because, you know, yeah, okay. For instance, I would think Zeta would probably notice the first. She's doing AP classes. She's like school is like she's hundred percent focused on school. Okay. Now Emilio, he's probably seventy percent focused on school. Which okay, get it. Teenage boy, no problem. But so Zeta, yep, she would definitely see it. Alicia, Adriano, they would definitely see it. But now, like when Emilio is seeing it, like and telling me and sending me pictures of like, hey, look, this is a bathroom. Uh, that now is closed again because kids just drew a bunch of stuff on the, you know, the petitions between the bathroom stalls. Um, when that's, you know, you have students saying it, you have teachers basically begging for, like, we need backup, we need support of the board, we need support here because of stuff is going on. Okay, well, it's time to do something because... Or, you know, and the hard part is, is as... You know, being on that parent side for two and a half years, going to meet, you know, I went to a lot of meetings. I didn't go to everyone. I watched most, not all, but yeah. between attending and watching, I I would like to think that I kind of had a good understanding of what was going on. Um, but there's just, I, I mean, the the regulations and laws that are put on us. So it's not the principal saying don't do anything right like that might be but it's coming from guidance that's received just like yeah there's a lot of that you know what Plus. i'm saying like there's there's so you get what i'm saying it's kind of i'm not trying to be delicate but it's it's not because it's not always now sometimes teachers try to manage it as best as they can and then you know just like i told you on the show yesterday i didn't realize i had a you know sociopath on my hands. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So like a teacher's trying and the next thing you know, it's flipped on them. And it's like, I tried to do, I was polite, kind. I, I changed it up. We did fun things for learning and it's still not working. Kind of like, right. I think that's what you had said that one teacher communicated with you is like basically begging them to do what they need to do, helping them, giving them every tool necessary showing them that she's giving them every tool and trying to get it to them, and then they still are like, nah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, like... I so that's like, not the teacher's fault. That's not and this is the administration's fault. This isn't a brand right. new one year. This is education's not important at that child's home, and so it's not important to that child because that child thinks that they can... And, and it's a group of them. It's a lot. It's not like one or two that... You know, or having a bad experience at home. Like, I would suspect that some of these are just apathetic parents. Probably some of them would probably be ashamed or, you know, embarrassed, let down by their kids. And others would probably think it's funny. Yeah. But the point is, what you're asking for is we need the parents who care to show up, give us feedback for your ideas. Like, it, I'm sure there's some anger out there because 
you know. Like, yeah, if you want this bullying to, it's never going to stop. It's not even just bullying. But no, it's, but it's, that's something, you know, that's a word that, you know, I don't know if it's triggering, but it's like makes people pay attention. Yeah, but not everybody's bullying. Like people just walk out know, of classrooms and yeah, like, what are you going to do? You're going to make me go back? And then they try to like bargain and barter. And it's like, get back in the classroom. It's way, way, way more than bullying. Like it's so it's a lack more. of. Oh, it's a, well, it's a, a lack of discipline. Lack of discipline yeah. and a lack of consequences. Yes. Because we're limited. Parents, you know, I'm sure there are some that, like, if they have students and they hear this, they're, like, not my child, you know. But if it's not your child and, and you have a child in the school district, show up and, you know, tell tell everybody what you do for success for your child so maybe – you know, teach them other skills. I don't know. Like, I just, we need the feedback because it goes into the, right? So there's all kinds of different effects there. But at the end of the day, you know, we we have a lot when it comes to property taxes. So on, on top of that, as much money as we're spending, like we need the state to step up their game because at a certain point in time, we're going to run out of money and then it's really going to get crazy. I would suspect that's just my assumption yeah. in a few years because hell, I got my electric bill yesterday and I'm still not over it. I just saw a thing. We have the second highest electric rates in the country based on our fuel, co- fuel, uh, fuel costs or, you know, yeah, like the fuel cost to make electricity and the current upgrades are going to the infrastructure, which if you notice down like by the high school and like they're doing all, like, Poles and, stuff like all the poles and I have no problem with that because you know the amount of money you pay like that's, I mean, they should be doing that anyways like maintenance should be a normal thing I'm sure it is but it does make me wonder like well, why is there so many lines I and mean, it's just some person probably like oh because Tim well but you know it used to be like there's two prime there's one primary into this like I don't know but if you look now there's so much more on those Holes. Except for out here on Barton Whitney. Well, maybe eventually. There's a phone here. line and there's a electric line. <laughs> yeah. And my phone line has been down for a yeah. while. The phone they don't even like, care. care. Yeah. You think they was like they tested don't or whatever, but nope. they don't care. I mean, I don't have an account with them, but like you would still think that they would know that phone companies are horrible. Electric's different because death, you know, fire. Well, the other power, thing, like when, when it went down, electric came out and then i was like well, what about that and they're like that's not ours that's not ours we don't care. drive over it you know throw it out of the way whatever yeah so that's just thrown yeah. over there hanging down I, hopefully no electricity ever comes through on some leaves and yeah. so this is us asking you as a community to show up april 6th at this board meeting um i'm not even sure where in the agenda it is i'm assuming it's in there somewhere but it will be no matter what if it's not if it's not on it currently steve will know it'll be posted this afternoon but yeah, um it should be. so like if you're like oh, i can't make five o'clock but i could be there at 5 30 well i'm sure the conversation will still be either not happened yet or it'll be going on it's not going to be a short conversation so please show up we need your support we need a bunch of people in that room saying yeah this has happened to my kid and we want change because that's what's going to help the board make the decision, you know, hey, no, it's enough's enough. Right, because I, I don't want to make my recommendations based off of, like, now I have received feedback from teachers who are also residents. So, I mean, I have that feedback, but right. I would like more feedback than that and then my platform. Kind of like how I was saying earlier, like if you email your senator or congressman, and they, you know, if you get more, mostly this feedback, then that's how you should go because that's your constituents that care enough to write you yeah. or, you know, communicate with you on it. So my, the point that I'm asking is communicate with us, you know, open the conversation up from your end publicly so that it's on the record and we know exactly how everybody feels because – it's worth having a conversation. Like it's not, you can't shy away from it. Like something has to be done to help realign our kids goals and expectations as it comes to school. Because right now it's, 
there are enough of them causing issues that it's affecting every like everyone, teachers, other students who are interested in trying to, yeah, to learn. Hundred percent. And for some reason, if you can't make the meeting, she's like, I just can't do it. Email. You can email us. Any of us. Cbeard at sau forty three dot org. Ask Morris at sau forty three dot org. Uh, Jenna's is on there. Like, you know, Bert. Like they're all. If you go to the website, it's there. But um, then send us an email, and I'll read it. You'll read it. Like, well, that's fine. I mean, we need people there. But if you have to send an email, and that's that's just more to say, hey, okay, I got this one. I got this. Like, um, this is super important. I, I think this is like the most important thing that we could do this year. So that way we can set up for next year being a lot better year and start to actually meet goals and exceed goals that we have as a board that, you know, expectations for our students and stuff. And, and the thing is like a lot of people don't ever want to talk about this stuff. Cause well, I don't want to talk about the bad things. Like there's so much good that happens in Newport. Yes, there absolutely is. I have great kids on my softball team and like the varsity team. Like I enjoy every day going to practice because these kids, like, they're really great kids. Well, if we want more success stories coming out of Newport like that, you know, or any success story, like, we need to correct this. So you have to face the bad things to continue to get the good things. We can't just look at all the positive stuff and forget all the bad stuff. Don't worry about it. Like, you know, the house is burning down, but, man, that nice front door is its a really nice door. Like, we, we gotta, we got to stop this now. Put yeah, stuff in I, place. I don't want to tell anybody how to raise their kids. The one thing that I will say is that your kids are not your friends. No, they, like you know what I mean. Like, yeah, hopefully, you have one to be a day parent. You have a good right. relationship to where they'll talk to you about anything or whatever. So you don't want to ostracize them in that sense. But also, like, it's not funny whenever they're disrespectful. Right. And these things right here that you give your kids. It's the worst thing you could ever do to your kids. Worst thing. I, again, I'm not going to tell you. I know that I checked Zeta's phone pretty regularly up until maybe she was a junior or senior. You know what I mean? Like once I realized that the childish things that she and her friends, you know, may or may not have done on the phone when they were younger. But, you know, she learned from it. Right. Yeah. There's... It used to be, you know, I, mean, I didn't even let her have like social media accounts. I, I, I told the story and it really bothers me is that when we moved here, instead of communicating through school calendars or like a posted schedule, it was you had to be on Facebook meet or whatever to find out when and where practice was. And it's like ours is just a text message. I have a group text and Jeff Miller's in it. But otherwise, they never even would have been on any yeah. But then she got on Facebook, and then I think it's Instagram. So like the only two that she has. But you know, she's friends with Nikki and has. But you, you know what I mean. But like, you have to. I mean, that's a lot of information available to a young mind. I mean, all the things. That Could you, you imagine? Well, all the things you're trying to protect your kids from that you used to not have to worry about it because they'd have to be exposed to it. Like, okay, I'd have to bring this person into my home, which could potentially open up that you know right. door. It's all right here. They're all doing it in their room or wherever they are. When you're not paying attention, they're on there and they're being influenced. Uh, influenced and and it's just uh, no clue. Just crazy. But anyways, next Thursday, April 6th, uh, 5 o'clock, please uh, show up. We'll obviously post on our page and stuff like that. And we'll talk about this a little more as like next week, um, just as a reminder. But uh, this is super important it's very important just like the stuff with the town and whatever like this is just as important like 100 percent. and i'll see hopefully some select my members will show up and be like hey what can we do to help because that's what it's supposed to be right just figure out how do we figure this out so that our town itself benefits and our town goes forward and uh yeah so i mentioned this yesterday and i have a time now so tomorrow april 1st this is not april 1st april fool's joke uh, Sanctuary Ice Cream in Sunapee at 10 a.m. is doing their Easter egg hunt, um, which I'm supposed to be going to, I believe. I think the Andrew said we're going. So, uh, so it'll be fun for you know young kids. Go. I don't know if the Easter Bunny will be there. I assume maybe the Easter Bunny will be there. I'm not really sure, but it's an Easter egg hunt, and kids love that. So, oh, I, I, the Morrises support all surrounding Tri County ice cream 
I love the sanctuary. Can't wait for it to open. The sanctuary is awesome because you got the animals. You got yeah. stuff to keep the kids busy, and it's a family-run business. Yeah. It's local. Yeah. Well, it's not a bee, but locally owned. I actually believe I saw that Dad's Dogs is opening this weekend too. Oh. Um, speaking of like ice cream, and I don't know if they're gonna have their ice cream yet, but I'm sure they'll have some food. So that's exciting because that's another sign of crazy spring. Gene. Is it, it's crazy Gene, right? Or? I'm not calling anyone crazy. I don't know who you're talking exactly about, but I believe yeah, I know who you're talking. <laughs> I'm about. a big fan of dads. I'm a big fan of the the restaurant at the golf course. If you haven't tried that out, I have not tried that out. I've heard so very many things. good breakfast. I had the yes. chicken and waffles. Probably well, whenever it was the winter carnival, Nikki and I went, and it was awesome. Yeah, I have seen on Facebook many people talk about that. So this, so there are options in Newport and surrounding areas. That's close by like you just don't think about it i know i never think about it ever and you said i was like yeah that's right we should try that sometime um get out support your business you know your local businesses and the other thing too like back to the school thing kind of like talk to your neighbors and people you know and be like hey you know what's going on in your life today what's there's a lot going on out there and no one talks anymore, right? We go on here, we're on Facebook, like, I know what's going on. Look, so-and-so just posted this. None of this is real in that sense. Right. Like, <laughs> go talk to your neighbors and be like, so they can be like, yeah, just got my light bill. And, you know, especially elderly people, like, just got my light bill. Um, probably not going to get to eat much this week because I also have to get my meds this week. Like, Right. Like, so... We talk about this stuff and like, oh, Tim and Steve are just talking and whatever. This is just, this is real stuff every day. I see it. I hear it. I, you know, I get an email last night. Boom. I, I messaged Steve like, what the hell is going on? Uh, there's like serious stuff. And you go like, we went to Richard's earlier this week. And you leave there and you just, I spent 30 minutes there having a conversation and we both did and left there like oh my god or like we have to do something because you just feel like you feel it here like this is this shouldn't be happening this is like no, no, I don't know. We always... and i think what it is is so many people because they're their phone because of life because you're trying to freaking work so you can pay your damn light bill and feed exactly. your freaking kids uh you're not looking around and seeing what's happening around you and like you're not hearing the stories you're not Hearing about oh we're like yeah right you know, because Johnny state, goes you, home you, every night and doesn't get dinner, that's a legit thing. That's not Facebook. That's not your stupid phone. That I'm just as guilty as anybody on my phone. Look at my phone. Like have a conversation with somebody. Like and that's why we did like when we did the 5K last year, and it it come out of something that was at a meeting that was kind of like we turned a negative into a positive where you know what, we're going to do this 5K. We're trying to raise money for the snack program because legit, the grant goes out or there's whatever. There's kids at yeah. school that they eat at school and they don't get food at home. Or yeah, there's horrible things we hear all the time. And there's lots of things, unfortunately, we can't talk about. But there's lots of things happening that you can easily hear from people and be like, yeah, this is happening. And you can so help like, influence and... Even yeah. just listening to somebody and yeah. being there to talk to, it's it's amazing. Like because we always say, it doesn't matter what political party, or whatever you know, whatever. However you look at life, like in those terms, us versus them, whatever. Yeah. We're all kind of struggling and to put up and deal with the same things. Yeah, you know, it's like, like we all have similar problems, and it's it's not. And our, our town always has come together for everything. Yeah, right? that's we, always like. You realize there's people, there's kids, especially out there, that aren't getting the food they should be getting, you know. And, and I don't understand that. Some of you like there is the food pantry, so I don't know if is that not being utilized. Well, or, think about it. Some people may be embarrassed to go there, right? But my God, like if you know someone that doesn't have food, like reach out to us. Like we'll figure it out, and we'll get you. Like we'll get you food. Like I'll make some phone calls and. You'd be surprised what can happen. Like, it's not okay. And this is where all this is coming from with the behavior, with, because it's just this whole thing about our community. And I know, like, the whole purpose of really 
doing the show is to help our community and to make people aware of things that are happening. It's the only reason we do it. Because honestly, we both suffer physically and emotionally every day doing the show. It does. Because it, dra- it sucks the life out of you. Because everything we seem to talk about on the show, it's like stuff happening, whether it's nationally, which is a big thing, or even locally or statewide, that is screwing us in one way or another. They're, it's hurting our lives or it's stealing more money from us. It's something. And so it's hard. And I know like a couple days ago, it's like, oh, boy, Steve is way off today. And I went home that day and I felt the same way Steve did. And it keeps, you know, it kind of goes back and forth, right? But it's tough. We get it. And this is probably why so many people just Tune it put out. blinders on because they can't deal with it. But just think if we all came together as a community and dealt with it, we at least could make our community better. Like, yeah, we're we going to fix everything. Of course not. We can't. But there's a hell of a lot more that we can do. Like, we come together for sports in this town. There's a football game, and bam, like, you know, we could do this so that, you know, Johnny or Sally or whoever isn't going home and not getting food tonight. And if you think in your mind, you're like, oh, well, Tim, there's DCYF, and this is what they do. Bullshit. They don't do anything because they have so many cases. They've closed all, like, the detention places like like we had kids that used to go to ryan house that come to newport and you know they were in trouble for whatever like they're closing all that stuff they're taking all that away so which just shows that once again we don't want any accountability for anything right so it's like we purposely just running everything right into the ground like it's come to the point i think the last resort we have is as a community we have to do it ourselves you can't rely on the government for anything. You can't rely on any of these people. You have to rely on ourselves as a community to be like, okay, we're going to fix this. We're going to fix this drug problem we have. We're going to fix this freaking kids not having food and, and parents just, like, done. Not participating in a child's life yeah. outside of. Do you know how much power you have as a community? You don't have any power, just one, two people. No, I, I say it all the time. But 6,000 people show up. That's going to send a message. That's going to send a real big message. And we don't need 6,000 right now, but, like, we no, need – I'm – let's fill – You're this, motivating me, baby. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go out. Fill the fill the Lutonson room with people. Fill yeah, the del- – and, and, and like you said, it's not to be angry. It's no. to solve problems. Say, hey, I'm here to help. Right. I think a lot of times that's it, too. Well, no one's asked me for my help. Well, I'm asking you right now for your help. I am asking you to help on – April 6th, next Thursday at the school board meeting. I'm asking you to help April 4th at the deliberate session. That's at 6 o'clock at the high school. Let's fill the gym. You don't have to be angry. You could just, yeah, just be just there because you want to be there. And find out right. what all's going on. There's 22 yeah. things that are so to yeah. vote on that I don't, you'll be able to have a better background and understanding yeah. if you. I don't need angry people. I need people to show up and say, what can I do to help? And then it's our job to make sure that we task them with whatever it is they we need. Oftentimes, we just need you to literally show up. Yeah, and, I don't and, need your money. I don't need your time necessarily, except for that meeting. Show up. Say, hey, okay, this can't continue. We want change. Okay, we're, we're here change. to help. And yeah, and there'll be backlash. There'll be some teachers. There's some parents pissed. You did what to my student? You kicked him out of class. Yeah, we did. And I'll sit there and take all that heat all day long. I don't care. If your kid can't behave and your kid can't act like a hu- decent human being, you're not going to go to school there. Real simple. Private schools don't put up with any of this crap. They kick your ass out so fast. And you pay private schools yourself, and you pay way more money than, pro- you know. Right. KUA is like forty grand a year. They will kick you out in a heartbeat and still take your forty grand <laughs> for the year because they're not going to tolerate it. Yeah, that's – so. Here it is. Like, people are starting to, like, you see stuff on what's at Newport, like, trying to get, like, people involved. Like, you know, we don't like what's going on in our town. Do something about it. Yeah. And you don't, have to Show be, and you don't even up. have to be angry about it. Nope. You don't have to talk half time. Just, just sit there and stare at us or yeah. the selectmen. When the know, selectmen have a room full of standing room only. Yeah. They know it's important. And I pointed out, see, this is the first time you actually had an answer to your residents in a long time. And it needs to happen a hell of a lot more often. School board's no different. Yeah. Fill the room. 
I don't care if there's 500 people. Like, it ain't going to fit in the room, but well, I mean, cool. Fill it. Hold to account because we all make mistakes, right? Like, I, I have a general philosophy that most people who have jobs show up and want to do well for the most part. Yeah. Who right? Wants like, to nobody not wants do well. to, like, I don't think any teachers, any administrators are like, hmm, how can I mess up things? Today? Right. How like, can I do a bad job and yeah. screw this kid's life? Nobody up? thinks that. Like, everybody really wants to make a difference. Like, if you're in the teaching profession, you're trying to make a difference. If you ran and you got elected, I assume that you're trying to make a difference. Like, you have ideas that, that got you elected, and, yeah, it might be hard to enact them, but, like, if we show up and you have, when I say we, like the citizens show up and you got 30 people shaking their head when you're done, when the the person who isn't afraid to talk speaks and everybody's like, yep, then that sends a message to either board. Exactly. Just like... Concord, they, I don't know if you saw, but they moved the parental rights thing from, I think it was supposed to be today or yesterday, but they moved it to April 18th or 20th so because they, they, so they could have it in the big room. Yeah. Good. And then you just fill the big room. Yeah. Fill it. Make it still standing room only. Send a message. It's now or never. It's real simple. It's now or never. Yeah, nobody's coming to help us. No. Keep sitting on your hands, and you'll have no decisions ever to make in the future because they're going to be gone. And you're like, oh, that's crazy. Really? Why don't you just open up the news <laughs> and just look through everything and then spend some time looking through and looking through, and you'll be like, wait, what? What just happened there? Yeah. Or read the headline and then read the article and see if the headline actually matches with what the okay. last – two or three paragraphs say because they also bury the truth you know because they attention spans are very short so that's a little you know why that is little trick i picked up on was like oh. tiktok and their one minute videos right so it, that's detrimental to, that's what's screwing it's just screwing everybody up i mean i, I was all about risk of it yeah okay but. i was all about addressing tiktok security risk right but now they're uh, to address it they decided well we'll take away all your rights and we'll spy yeah. on you even more yeah screw it i'll 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 let china have my information over you stealing my freedom yeah exactly because i don't, like, I don't know what china is going to benefit from it what are you going to get out of me we'll just figure out your patterns what you like okay etc so et cetera. you can manipulate my purchasing power maybe yeah. but <laughs> what else are you going to do yeah, drone strike comes in. <laughs> I'm just worst case scenario on it for you, Tim. But that is the worst case. Is, you, you know what I mean? But you're right. I'm a big proponent of getting rid of TikTok, but not at the giving up all my other rights. No. In that case, screw it. Or run TikTok like they do in China, where if you're under a certain age, all you get is educational videos. Or do what Mexico did and just seize the fucking company and say oh now it's an american company and we don't care national security risk pretty sure that would deem it something you could seize just seize it uh, I, I, see you say that and then i start going down a rabbit hole of why do we sell farmland to china bill gates why do we have what is it now like five police departments that are chinese police departments literally owned by china one's in new york city one's in l.a and there was actually a few other things that popped up that the United States has nothing about. Like, it's it's probably Houston. Like, are you kidding me? Chicago, I would guess. If I'm pretty were sure that's illegal. <laughs> like, so. Well, they did allow the, uh, whatever, the free zone there in Seattle. Yeah, autonomous zone, yeah. Autonomous They let that happen, so. But you know why those bad things like that happen? Because the community didn't come together and nip it in the bud. Well, in that case, the community came together. Said <laughs> amount of people came together and, and said, everybody "We're out. doing this." That's the power of the community. Now, a bigger group should have surrounded the place and said, "Oh yeah, well, you got twenty minutes to come out of there. We're going to crush you." But yeah. or just cut them off and cut off their supply yeah, lines, and then right. they'll end it. They'll come out real fast, right? But you saw their garden; they tried to plant. Yeah. Think people see, like, uh, you would, see, that's why you want your kids to have maybe a gardening class so that they don't look like jackasses whenever they try to take and make an autonomous zone. I, I mean, it was a pretty pathetic looking – I mean, it had to almost be sarcastic. But they actually put it on there like, we're starting our own community garden. And it was – I'm pretty sure it was like an oil stain. <laughs> I don't know, it was just bad. It was, 
embarrassing. The whole thing was embarrassing. All right, now we're just going to go off to the good part of our show, and we're going to end it. Sounds like a plan. All right. So we talked about the sanctuary tomorrow, the Easter egg hunt. Um, April 7th, so next Friday, this is the Easter egg hunt on the Common in Newport. 10 o'clock is the 60-plus um, Fountain of Youth one. It was a ton of fun last year when I went down and uh, recorded it. Uh, it was cool. I probably had maybe 30 people or whatever. It was it was just a ton of fun. And then 11, they're doing the preschool Easter egg hunt, so you know, young kids up to preschool, which was kind of interesting last year when they did it because I'm like. Yeah, that's a fifth grader? <laughs> well, exactly. I'm like, who are these older kids that should be in school? I was maybe they're homeschooled. I mean, I didn't go around asking because honestly, it really, wasn't in my business really. But I was like, who are these kids? But anyways, eleven o'clock on the common next uh, Friday for the Easter egg hunt for the kids, and uh, it's a ton of fun. There's no expense. The rec center is what puts us on. So if people out there are like that rec center is costing us all this money. They don't do nothing. Well, they do. Um, and honestly, let's look at it this way. That rec center is probably what's keeping your kid off drugs. And that might be like, my kid's too smart for that. Oh, yeah. Every one of those kids growing up is probably too smart for it, too. But now look at our society. So um, you need something else. There's a line of defense between that and bad decisions. If your kids are hanging around with people making bad decisions, they're going to eventually make a bad decision. But if we have something constructive and positive for the kids to do, at least a good majority of them are probably going to do something positive with it. Um yeah, focus their energies on something good. Yeah. Steve, this is our favorite time of the year. It's peep show time. There's not, some not very the, creative. Not shows. that kind of peep show, though. This is the 12th annual peep diorama contest. So it starts on the 8th of April and goes through the 22nd of April. You have to have the peep display in by the six you gotta drop it off at the are you gonna do a steve and we should do one we really should apartment above a studio above the garage we tim and steve show all right we should do one. me and steve are gonna do one steve just come up with that we're gonna do one so we're gonna have it done by the six yes so we gotta get our butts going <laughs> so uh yeah basically they take peeps and they just make this display it's really cool um we never actually got to go watch it last year we were gonna we meant to go around check it out but Miss, well, I walked through there, but I think we were going to video it, weren't we? That's right. Like, you did walk I, through I walked it, yeah. through, and there were some amazing. This is a twelve. They also year. had like the student art. Uh, yeah. Gallery. Well, there's something else I'll okay. talk about after. Um, so, if you want to do this, it says uh, drop in the gallery. And so this is tomorrow. They're actually on April first, um, from ten to two. Drop in the gallery t- uh, to work on your peep diorama f- for the peeps diorama contest. Um, we'll be, they have glue guns, um, bring your own shoebox and peeps, enjoy an abundance of studio supplies, including fabric, ribbons, um, etc. And this is a drop-in. We're going to have popsicle sticks to make our table. Probably, yes. I would think they would. Um, so if you want to do this and you're like, mm, I don't know if I'm creative enough, get your peeps, get your shoebox, go over there tomorrow between 10 and 2. There'll be all these people there. We probably can guide you. And they'll have all these items that will be, you know, used and you could use to make whatever you want to do so you just have to provide the shoe box and the peeps yeah and i actually have a shoe box at my house as long as adelina didn't take it and break it which i think as of this morning it was still there so i'll grab that um yeah and, and honestly what better thing to do with peeps than make a diorama because eating them is disgusting so uh, there's some good peeps out there nah chocolate covered peeps are good yeah but we're talking just regular old marshmallow peeps, the yellow, the pink. Uh, yeah. So then this starts tomorrow as well. It's the black and white exhibit opening tonight um, from 5 to 7. It's a jury community exhibit featuring a variety of artwork connected in um, the gallery in black, white, and gray. And this goes from April 1st all the way to May 31st. So, uh, two big things happening at once and uh there was a list of like people participating in it. it was a huge list so so this is all library center stuff here which is 
Right behind the Richard Street. Yeah, and like so many people that I just don't like. We have this beautiful library. We, like we have the library center. And I just think I think we just drive by every day and we don't think about it at all. Like I know I'm guilty of that. Well, I have, and I've done a lot there in the past. Like when I worked at NCTV and stuff, like through school and stuff, I taped a lot. Like my first show I ever did was a toy exhibit that was there, and uh, it was really cool. Like I actually should find a way to get that on like a digital thing and like post it again because it was just cool. Um, so these like these are things that Newport offers that, you know, take advantage of. Like there's no charge tomorrow to go do this peep thing. There's no charge to display this and, and check it out. Like um, get involved. Like it's a fun thing to do. Well, you yeah. know, that it reminds me, so you know, we were talking about earlier about being community and involved. Like little things that some people may not you know, that's why like you said, we like to advertise because that coffee house performance that mr stewart and the band put on yeah. i mean what a great what was it a friday night and sitting there relaxing and getting to see kids from every grade shine and they fed you they fed you they were, you they were like, learning responsibility fine. they were you know they it was were bringing yes. snacks around so like it's it's good we have programs in place right and that also not only you know makes you feel good because you see them but you, all, you just you get to see them shine, and it's the future of our town. Yeah, I agree, hundred um, percent. So you know, to go along with doing the peeps, like participate yeah. in that kind of stuff, that makes it easier to talk to people. So you don't have to go up and be like, "Hey, how's everything going?" I know we haven't talked in two years because I've been buried in my phone, but you know, you may meet somebody new at the peeps at the concert. I don't know, just like we talked about, be part of the community. It starts with us at the lowest level. Yeah, because I can tell you right now, there's nothing so important on your phone that is more important than something like this and the experience you could have with your kid or your loved one or whatever. I mean, I catch myself all the time, like, getting short with Nikki, and all I got to do is hit pause on the TV because I don't have live TV. And, you know, it's all... I think, like, Adelina will be like, you know, oh, build this with me. I'll be on my phone and be like... And I catch myself sometimes, like, well, dude, what are you doing? Like... The phone is nothing. You know, nothing going on right now is more important than that. Um, right, because you, you know, eventually she'll won't want your help. Yeah, she's already three. That's how fast it's going. And, like, so enjoy the moment because, trust me, I have older kids that, you know, my son's 20. My oldest son's 20. Well, yeah, my other older son will be 20 next month. So it's like it goes so fast. And anyone out there that has had kids is going to totally be like, yeah, it goes so fast. Like, it does. You're missing it. You're totally missing it. Like, unless you have this in your hand to take pictures and videos and stuff like that, you're missing on what's really important in life. Because I guarantee you when you look back and you're 60 years old, you're like, man, all the things I could have done, but I was, you know, I was making TikTok videos or I was just doing – just life is here in, right now. This is life. This isn't life. So, you know, this was supposed to be made like, hey – can FaceTime grandma that's out on the West Coast that I don't ever get to see, and I get to see her. That's awesome. But that's not what happens anymore. And we're all guilty of it, trust me. I'm just as guilty as anybody with it, you know. Um, I wore my uh, Newport uh, Green Up Clean Up shirt to practice yesterday, and the lady's like, or Andrew, one of them was like, what are you wearing orange so they don't hit you? And uh, I was talking to Stanley, and we're looking at the girls, like, throwing. I totally manifested that. You did? No. When they ask if oh, you're wearing that. Yeah. So I get hit with a ball, like, a couple inches above my knees. And I was like, it, it yeah, I mean, it hurt. But I wasn't like, I was just thinking where it could have hit. <laughs> and then I would have been like, just drag me outside and let me die. Because, oh, my God. Like, you. I was like, so the shirt had the opposite effect. It made you the target. I think that could have been what happened. Of course, Adrian, I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, it's it's fine. Like, oh, Adriano hit you? No, Adriana. Oh. I'm like, girl. Yeah, I asked her, like, what's your name? Because I couldn't read Stanley's, right? She's like, my name's Adriana, but, like, you can call me whatever. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I got this. My son's name's Adriano. You just have an A on your ears. This is going to be the easiest name to remember out of all these. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh yeah, so whew, talk about a close call. But the reason I mention that is the end of next month, April on that Sunday, is uh, 9 a.m. is Newport's doing the green, the green Up Clean Up, a.k.a. Twisted Tea Can Pickup Day. Um, yeah. We did this last year and plan on doing it again this year. Uh, 
Let me take three hours. Saturday. What day is it on? It's a Sunday. Oh, I get back on Saturday. <laughs> Did you have well, PJ change that? Just to... No. I would have, though. Like, hey, PJ. The Another good opportunity where you feel good because you actually can see that you made a difference picking up someone else's garbage, but... You know what I mean? Like as you fill up a bag and tie it off and drop it, you're like, man, I did something. Yeah. And even if you – Like the return on your investment is – Like I've seen some people just, you know, say you're you – know, I know a lot of elderly people that couldn't go out and do what we're doing. But maybe you just like cleaned up in front of your house. Yeah. And got out on the rack, get a bag, the, the, like the blue bags, whatever. You could just – Or the put, common. Yeah, yeah, or a nine, you know, on the common. And you could – just do what's literally in front of your house and put the bag out there. Yeah, and, I bet in front of my house I can fill up a bag or two just yeah. between. I mean, we're pleading with people that litter on this road just to throw it in front of Steve's house because it'll be easier for us to clean it up. <laughs> and I'll join in that. I know it's your house, but. Don't throw anything out of your car ever is what I would tell you. I know, but they don't listen. Just look out there. I know. Like this is Dunkin' Donut cups that. For, like Put it you in see the them zone. getting pushed out, like you talked about the ice melting. As the ice melts back, there's some yeah. Dunkin' cups in my ditch, fish ditch like area. I mean, every gas station, I think like like yeah, they just, all have trash things. I, I go to the track. I go to the this is Andrea will have my truck, and I'll go to the get gas and spend twenty minutes. Well, not twenty minutes, but you know, a bunch of time. Cleaning out just trash after trash. And she'll tell you, like, okay, I'm going to clean that. Like, and whatever. But you know what I do with it? I put it in the T-Birds thing or whatever gas station. Man. I stick it in their trash thing. And uh, it didn't cost me nothing. Yeah. And I didn't throw it on the road like an a-hole. You know, I just threw it away. Uh, I think, was it Nikki or Zeta made fun of me when I was pumping gas? I I don't like to throw... Like, this is in a bottle, so it's kind of fine, but I would, like, go find somewhere and pour it out so that it's not. I only do that at home because I do it. we put our trash in the in the dump trail, and I pay by the pound to, to get rid of it until, like, another month from now, I have to get a regular dumpster because you can't have trash. For, for, I've had, all, like, most of my winter's trash in there. It's cold. It doesn't matter. Like, if there's some food or something there, you know, it's not going to smell. Which I'll eventually I'll switch that, but I'll do that. I'll dump it out because I mean, if there's a hundred bottles in there with this much water, I'm paying to get well, rid of that. Well, think about if you're the guy or gal that has to empty that, and it's a McDonald's cup and it's halfway full of or, Dr Pepper. Or it's a landfill with it in it. Just dump but it you in. know what I mean, like the bag breaks. So I like yeah. at West Point, you have duties, and so the, one of them is to collect recyclables and sometimes garbage and you know when i went through whatever and then nothing worse than pulling stuff and taking garbage and having it spill all over you so i am very cognizant because that happened to me a few times that like i i don't want that to happen to anybody it's nasty and you know that's my own personal take by the way i'm just listen if you're gonna drink twisted tea and bud light or whatever like do it at home not in your car yeah, exactly like how long of a drive do you have that you and you can't wait? Yeah. If you can't wait, that's a sign you have a problem. <laughs> that's <Hello>. true. <laughs> like, uh, plenty of opportunities to participate and helping our community out. Sounds like. Yeah. On that note, we're not even going to talk about Trump being indicted. That's his problem. He'll get out of it. It's not a problem yet. Soon. Yeah, not a problem yet. Hey, if he can be indicted, so can others, I would imagine. Yeah. Like, we'll be screwed soon. So we're going <laughs> to yeah. go back on a few of these shows and, <laughs> you know. Start taking notes on everything you said or didn't say. Yeah. It's all good. Once again, thank you to Ring Towing for sponsoring and Sunshine Realty. And uh, thanks for listening, watching the show. Um, please share the show. This one, I feel like, is one of the most important shows we've done. We're really asking the community for their help on, you know, the fourth, the sixth, like getting involved and helping to make our community a, a better place, which at the end of the day, that's, I think, all any of us want. So Yeah, and, and you know, it might be we set up a committee and you volunteer to be on it. and yeah. We're going to do something. we got to do. Kind of, yeah. Here's the call to action. So have a great weekend, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week on the Tim and Steve Show. <laughs>
Blacklist.io.